I welcome you to the Arima Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are situated at number 19 Degan Street, Arima in Trinidad. And today, we are welcoming you to our virtual as well as our live worship service. God bless you as you I enjoy the this Lord experience here high. at Arima Seventh-day Adventist Church, a place you can call home. Happy Sabbath, everyone, and indeed, Happy New Year to each and every one of you out there joining us on our live stream. I would like you to all bow your heads with me, close your eyes as we pray to start our Sabbath service this morning. Loving Father in heaven, thank you for being with us, blessing us. I ask that as the service is started, Lord, you guide it, help that souls would be touched and persons would be warned to you lord be with everyone else help that they would share the link so that others would be able to come on be with all the participants and the av personnel i thank you as i ask my prayer in jesus name amen happy sabbath each and every one of you and happy new year to you as well this morning we want to start our praise and worship with Sabbath rest. So please sing along with us.
Shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tenders. Blessed Redeemer.
angels in glory. Strengthen on a gift to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. the crucified sound his praises Jesus who bore our sorrows love unbounded wonderful deep and strong praise him praise him tell of his excellent greatness praise him praise him ever in joyful song praise him praise him Jesus our blessed Let our joys be known.
will be you, Lord, I lift your name on high. Welcome again to everyone. So our team for Sabbath School this morning is holding on to my legacy in Jesus. What did I say? Holding on to my legacy in Jesus. And when you use the word holding, it seems to suggest that something else is happening or there is another force that is pulling you in an opposite direction. Hence the reason that you have to hold on to your legacy in Jesus. Now to tie into that, I would be delving and looking into scars. Because which one of us here haven't had a scar since birth or don't know what a scar is? And if we look at what the definition of a scar is, scars are areas of fibrous tissue, fibrosis, that replace normal skin after injury. A scar results from the biological process of wound repair in the skin and other tissues of the body. Thus, scarring is a natural part of the healing process. A scar could be defined as a mark remaining, for example, on the skin after injured tissue has been healed. Or it could be where a mark was left where something was previously attached. It could also be a mark or indentation, such as on furniture, on your car. You know your lovely car, your, somebody pass and scratch your car. They leave a scar on your car, resulting from damage or wear. Or it could also be a lasting moral or emotional injury, right? And what we are very sure about is every scar tells a story. Yes, every scar tells a story. Now, we would know based on the, the Bible that Paul would have suffered some scars. He says he was beaten um, 40 stripes minus one. He was pelted with stones. He was shipwrecked, right? He was left hungry more, on more than one occasion. 
So he had a couple scars. We have other Bible characters that also have scars. Scars can also be uh, marks of authority, credibility, respect. And in olden days, there was something referred to as battle scars. Yes, when those soldiers go out and they had scars from the battle, they were, they were revered, they were renowned, they were looked up, looked up to when they would have come back home uh, bearing these scars. Now, what are some of the scars that are more prominent today? And at the top of the list, I would have COVID. Coming from 2020, 21, and going into 2022, the scars of COVID is very much present in each and every one of our lives. I am pretty certain there is not one person here who has not known someone that has died in the year 2021. Those are the scars of COVID that we need to carry on. We also have the scars of surgery, accidents, burns, violence, sexual abuse. Well, what is important is we need to trust in God to heal all of these scars. Most importantly, how do we think Jesus feels about our scars? And I would like to let you know that as bruised, battered, and full of scars that we are, we should bear in mind that Jesus loves us with an everlasting love. I can assure you that Jesus was also beaten. He was bruised, he was pierced, and he still bears all the scars from dying on the cross for you and me. So when we go through 2022, and we look at the team for the year, for this quarter, as we start off with holding on to my legacy in Jesus, notwithstanding the scars that we have faced, in 2021 that we carry in into 2022 what we need to do is to hold on to our legacy in Jesus this is very very important and I would leave you with this thought here our scars are proof that we have fought and refused to surrender I would now take you over to sister Chelsea Dennis who has a very nice instrumental piece in store for us. There is a way to discover your
to everyone and happy happy new year we have all made it through 2021 and uh, that is something that is, is an accomplishment in itself and uh, so i want to wish you a happy 2022 and uh, hope that you will continue to trust in god to get you through no matter what may come your way so this morning i am here to do the lesson study and we are looking at the juniors or PowerPoint lesson study this morning. Juniors or PowerPoint. So young people, this is for you so that you will pay attention. And those of you who have not made a commitment to be baptized, those of you who have not made that decision yet, I hope that at the end of this quarter at least that you would have made that decision so that you can have that closer walk with God. And show everyone that you have accepted him through baptism. So before we begin, let us all bow our heads as we have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for your holy Sabbath day. We thank you, dear God, for blessing each and every one of us to see this new year. We thank you for the Sabbath day, dear God, where we can come and rest a while and spend this time learning about you, being reminded about you, and just fellowshipping with one another, even if online. Father, I pray that you would continue to bless every single person online and in church here. And I pray that you will help us to have a wonderful year. And no matter what comes our way, dear God, I just pray that you will help us to have that faith and that trust and to just depend on you and know that you will see us through. Continue to be with us throughout the service and may whatever is said during the session study be something to draw others closer to you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, our lesson this week is entitled, The Voice. The Voice. And uh, a voice is, when we, when we speak of voice, we could use it in the context of expressing something. So, you know, we always say somebody is voicing their opinion. Or we could, or the other definition, which is the sound produced in a person's larynx and uttered through the mouth which is speech, okay? So we have the voice as in expressing something and the sound produced, but they are both tied in because, of course, you cannot express this something if you don't speak it, all right? If there is no sound coming out. So a voice is when we express something through sound produced in a person's larynx and uttered through the mouth. Our power text our power text is, we were therefore buried with him through the baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Again, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And this is taken from Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. And for those who are not familiar with the juniors or PowerPoint lesson study, we also have something called a PowerPoint. And our PowerPoint for this week was God's love leads us to depend on Jesus and to be baptized. So God's love leads us to depend on Jesus and to be baptized. And that word depend comes up there. Depend. How do we depend on Jesus? But before we find out how we depend on Jesus, what does depend mean? So I want to give you a little time. I know it doesn't take long because we just go on our devices and we type in what is the definition of depend. So you just type in the def um, meaning of depend, definition of depend, and see what depend means. And based on the definitions that you find, I want you to choose which definition best describes the definition, sorry, the dependence on Jesus. So yes, there would be different definitions because any, once we have used the dictionary, we know how it goes. Sometimes there are kind of five, six definitions, but there is always one that is most suitable for the context for which you are trying to apply it. All right? So let's see which definition you come up with for dependence on Jesus. And I have here 
that depend means to be determined based or contingent, and it also means to be able, be able to trust or rely on. Be able to trust or rely on. And I think that that is the one that we would use to show our dependence on Jesus. Because we are able to trust and rely on Jesus. So if we go back to our PowerPoint which says God's love leads us to depend on Jesus and to be baptized, we could substitute depend with God's love leads us to be able to trust or God's love leads us to rely on Jesus and to be baptized. So we see some things coming out here in order to be baptized we, we need to experience God's love. Amen? We need to experience God's love. And in order to make that decision to be baptized as well, we also need to be able to depend on Jesus, to trust Jesus. Because how can we say, remember baptism, as we will learn a little later on about the definition of it, is about giving our lives to Christ. So if we are giving our lives over to somebody, we, are, we need to be able to trust that person. Okay, so when we trust Jesus, we are able to make that decision for baptism because we depend on him. Amen? So we ask ourselves, what are some ways that we can depend on Jesus? But first, what, what are some things that we depend on Jesus for. And if you are listening and you know you want to be a little participative because you are not here to answer, but you could type it in the chat. What are some things that you, that we all can depend on Jesus for? for? What are some things we could depend on him for? So I have here, we depend on him for salvation, for wisdom and understanding for the breath of life, for everything. Is there anything we don't depend on Jesus for? Think about it. We need to depend on Jesus for every single thing, for every, in every single aspect of our lives, through every single situation, we need to depend on Jesus. So we depend on Jesus for everything. And how do we show this dependence on Jesus? Because by praying, we show this dependence on Jesus by praying. Because if we trust this person, right, this person, Jesus, that we say we trust, then, of course, we will want to talk to him. So we can't say we trust somebody and then we have no communication with him. We don't say anything to him. We don't ask him for anything. We don't speak to him at all. So we, all, we need to be able to, when we say we trust Jesus, we pray. So we have to pray. Of course, we know what goes hand in hand with praying, reading our Bibles. Because yes, we speak to him in prayer, and yes, we feel his Holy Spirit, and we, we know that we get answers. But we also need to be able to read our Bibles. So young people, pray, read your Bibles, because remember, in the Bible is where you would find all that you need to know about Jesus, and it's in there that will, when you know all that you need to know. I don't know if we'll ever know all that we need to know, but when you know enough, you make that decision for baptism. And we do right. So we live right. We do the right things because if we really depend on Jesus, we do the right things to show that we depend on him. We will be a living sacrifice. So daily we surrender our lives to him and we live a certain way to show that we surrender our lives to him. We abide in Christ. It means that not just him saying that he is in us, but we also abide in him. And obviously, by reading the scriptures and praying and all of these things, if you notice, all of these things really tie one into the other. And the last thing I have here, but of course there would be many more, refuse to worry. Refuse. Now, last year, if you weren't a warrior, right, W-O-R-R, -R, right, last year, surely some level of worry would have come your way because COVID is in the air and it's still there. And uh, you would have, you know, there, there's this little thing in your mind where you might be saying, you know, what if, all right? And the fact that you are here means the what if did not happen. But some of us still 
some of the church family may have still contracted it, co contracted COVID and whatnot. But even despite all of that, in the midst of all of that, we are able to trust God and refuse to worry because what I always say is that if we really live the life that God wants us to live, even if we die, so what? Because we know that when we raise, when on that resurrection morning, we would be in the first resurrection, and that is what's important. So it doesn't matter even if we will to not see another day after today. Okay, so let us not worry. Let us put everything in God's hands because he knows what's best for us. Amen? So those are the points, ways to depend on Jesus. Pray, read the Bible, do right, be a living sacrifice, abide in Christ, and refuse to worry. So as we said up top, this lesson is the voice. And uh, in the Bible, there is one who was referred to as the voice in the wilderness. And if you know who that voice in the wilderness is, before I even go to that person, I want you to type it in the chat, the voice in the wilderness, who was that person? Because this quarter, we are studying, well, this week, we are looking at the John the Baptist and uh, his life, who he was, he was sent to prepare the way for Jesus, and also about the meaning of baptism. And so far, I'm sure you will have seen and heard that coming through. Okay? So, in Matthew chapter 3 and verses 1 to 3, if you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 3 and verses 1 to 3, we read, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And then we jump to five. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath, who hath warned you to come, sorry, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. And of course, he told the Sadducees and Pharisees a lot of things. But in, verses, in verse 13, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan and unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. So what we, have, what we see here is that baptism, John was in the, in the wilderness, you know, and J J um, people from Jerusalem came to him. And uh, John had to be somebody who was filled with the Holy Spirit because he, he was set apart. He wasn't even... Any fancy person, any rich, important, anything, any, you know, person who studied and real bright and all of this kind of thing. And he, yet, not and, but yet he was a person who the, the whole of Jerusalem was willing to come and listen to. And that shows us, young people, that you don't have, yes, it's important, it's, it's nice I, to have, you know, the, the letters behind your name, right? But when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that is even more important. Amen? Because that is what will draw others to Jesus. That is what will draw others to Jesus when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we are able to tell them about Jesus. So all of the letters, some people have all of the letters and they are still doing nothing for Jesus. But wherever you fall, whether you have the letters or you don't, the point is that we need to have the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need to allow God to come into our hearts and just fill us so that the people that we are, the things that we see, will indeed draw others to Jesus. 
So baptism is our response to God's love and the symbol of our commitment to live for him. Baptism is our response to God's love and the symbol of our commitment to live for him. So when you make that decision to be baptized, and I'm saying young people, but I know there are some older persons. There may be some non-Adventists or non-Christians who are uh, watching at this time. And you, you know, might be considering baptism. So baptism is your response to God's love because you have experienced God's love. God has done something or some things in your life and you could say, yes, this is because of God's love. So you are responding to God's love and you're showing uh, your commitment to live for him by being baptized. That's why it's a public thing because it's a symbol of showing your commitment to live for him. And we are able to live for Jesus. Why? Because, again, as our power point says, God's love leads us to depend on Jesus and to be baptized. Okay? So God's love. It's all about God's love, you know? All of these lessons, everything that we do, everything that we study, the entire Bible is all about God's love. And it's all about us accepting, recognizing, telling about God's love. So, Sister White in Desire of Ages, I know there are different desires of ages. So, I will just say the, the, the name of the chapter because I don't want to call page and then people are not finding the page that I am on. It's The Voice in the Wilderness. And if you have this one, if you have this one, it's on page 43. It says, John was to go forth as Jehovah's messenger to bring to men the light of God. He must give a new direction to their thoughts. He must impress, impress them with the holiness of God's requirements and their need of his perfect righteousness. Such a messenger must be holy. So you see, just as we were just speaking about, we need to be holy. And how are we holy? Because we are filled with the Holy Spirit. He must be a temple for the indwelling of the Spirit of God. In order to fulfill his mission, he must have a sound physical constitution and mental and spiritual strength. So you see, everything is, everything is intertwined. So it's not just about mentally and bright. It's not just about that. It's all about physical, mental, and spiritual all working together. Therefore, it would be necessary for him to control the appetites, appetites and passions. He must be able to so control all his powers that he could stand among men as unmoved by surrounding circumstances as the rocks and mountains of the wilderness. So John the Baptist wasn't just some ordinary person. He allowed himself to be used by God. So he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was considered a holy person. It didn't matter because he was speaking against all kinds of evils that were taking place in those days. And even though he was speaking against, he, did not, he didn't fear anybody. He didn't fear for his life. He didn't care that he was speaking against the prime minister or the president. So you see, even if we see wrong in high places, it's important that we even speak against these things, even in our day. So we also, when we look at baptism, we look at the fact that Jesus was baptized and we looked at that in Matthew chapter 3. And also in Acts chapter 8 and verses 26 to 38, we also saw another example of baptism where um, Philip, yes, Philip baptized someone and in that, in these two instances, we saw that baptism is not about Baptism is not sprinkling. Baptism is where you go under the water. Okay, because when somebody dies, you, you have to, you, you, you die and you, you, put, you are put in a box and you are lying down. So that's the symbol. That's how we symbolize the death, by being baptized, submerged in water. All right? It is a response to hearing the good news about Jesus. So when you hear the good news, and pastor will bring that good news this morning, 
when you hear that good news about Jesus, and wherever else you hear that good news about Jesus, you make that decision to be baptized, which means that you go under the water and you show that you are made a commitment to Jesus, to live for him, to serve him until the day you die or the day he comes. So now that we know what baptism is, let us look at what preparing the way of the Lord is. So remember, John spoke about repenting and being baptized. And to repent means to feel or express remorse, you know, sincere regret for something, for sin. It's really for sin, right? So you repent of your sins. We repent of our sins um, by showing or feeling and expressing sincere regret or remorse for it. And if we really feel that way about sin, we will turn away from it. If we have this shallow thing where we feel we are repenting and we're just saying it because, you know, it says to confess your sins, but we are not really, really re uh, repentant, then it doesn't make sense. It's better you just don't say anything, right? So we need to have that real remorse for sin. It's like you, you know what it does to God. You know what it, 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 it does to your relationship with him. You know what it has done to others around you and you don't want that you are so so hurt by it and you want to turn away right so that's how repentance is supposed to be so what kind of people prepare the way for others so there are a number of people who prepare the way for others the lesson just said ambassadors personal assistants secretaries teachers opening acts etc all right so you prepare the way for others so that there is something what we call more important coming so that the, the, the things before are just a precursor to that. So, for example, everything that happened this morning, the beautiful singing, the special music, uh, the, the Sabbath school greetings, and even this are preparing the way for the sermon. All right? So, there are a number of people who prepare the way for others. So, what happened in the days of... Uh, of old, when a king or ruler decided to visit parts of his kingdom, he would send notices by messengers so that the cities could prepare for his arrival. Part of the preparation involved removing bumps and filling the holes in the road along the way so the king would have a smooth path. I know when I read this, I thought about our roads here, and I'm thinking, you know, probably if our presidents and prime ministers were, you know, did that, you know, we might have some better roads here yeah, because we would, we would remove the bumps and fill the holes in the road, right? And we know how our roads are. But let's go back to this. So we, when we are preparing the way for our Lord, we are removing the bumps and filling the holes in our lives, in our hearts. So there are things that we know that we need to get rid of. There are things that we know that we need to smooth now. There are things that we know that just need not be there. We remove those things. There are, there are holes. There are, there are emptiness. Is, is emptiness is a plural. But there is emptiness in our lives. All right? There, there is emptiness in our lives sometimes. And we need to fill those. And the only way to fill those is by accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So... We are smoothing out the rough parts and filling the holes so that we prepare the way for Jesus. Amen? So, we offer our lives to Christ in baptism. We tell others about him. We, not just about him. So, sometimes we tell people about Jesus. But we never tell them what he has done for us. So, there is the telling about him. Because maybe, you know, they, they, they need to know who he is, you know, on a regular level. But what is more important is telling them what Jesus has done for you. What has he done for you? What has, what has he done in your life? Okay, so when you are able to tell others about Jesus and what he, and not just about him, because you know Sister Nicolette, right? But maybe Sister Nicolette has never impacted your life. Maybe when you were going through a rough path, she, a rough path, she wasn't there and she didn't say anything or do anything. So all you know is that she's a person who comes to church, she sings sometimes, she does lesson study, she does appreciation, so you know about. 
But then if you know that I have done something for you in your life to make your life better, and you could say, she's a real good friend. She's somebody you could depend on. She, 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 she helped me in, in times of whatever. That is a whole different experience and a whole different thing that you would tell somebody. Okay? So we worship God when we respond to his love and grace towards us. We worship God when we respond to his love and grace towards us. So brethren, this morning we looked at the fact that John the Baptist, and he was called that because of the fact that he was baptizing persons. John the Baptist was that person who was there to tell others, to prepare the way for Jesus, because Jesus was already born. John was, I, I think, just about six months older than Jesus. Jesus was already born. It's not like if he was coming 10 years down the road. But John was there to tell others because Jesus didn't begin his ministry as yet. So he was there to tell others about Jesus. Prepare that way so that people would come and get baptized and, you know, understand what this whole Christian life is supposed to be about. And in the same way, we are to be this voice in the wilderness. You see all that we are doing here? We are being that voice. Maybe there would only be 60 people watching. It doesn't matter. We are still that voice. It doesn't matter if there are, 10, there are only 10 people in church. We are still that voice. And, but we need to be a bigger voice. We need to be able to go out. And I was reading somewhere that there is a type of Christianity now where everybody is just comfortable. Somebody has status I saw that on this week. And that hit me because that is kind of like what we Christians are nowadays. We, 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 we are quite comfortable. But we need to stir things up like John. All right? Speak against things that we see are wrong. And of course, the most important thing, lead others to Jesus. So I hope that at the end of this quarter, at the end of, at the end of even this sermon, you would make a decision. You would make a decision to, be, to give your life to Christ and be baptized by immersion, I, I pray that you will, you know, just have that. Those of us who have been baptized, I pray that we will continue along our journey and have that even better, more committed relationship. This is a new year. And we like to make resolutions. So I hope that one of the most important resolutions we would make would be to have a better relationship. It should not be surface. It's 2022. Time for surface um, Christianity is over. We need to have that deep relationship with Jesus and give our lives to him and allow him to come and just to, to take over. And whatever he does in our lives, let his will be done. So I pray that we would, you know, just have a better relationship with Jesus after this. Uh, it's a new year, as I said, and it's a good time to start. So I just really hope that we will all really consecrate our lives to him, surrender our lives to him, and that those who have not been baptized will indeed choose to be baptized this year. So I just hope that all of you have a wonderful, wonderful day and that God will continue to bless you as we continue to worship together and continue to fellowship and continue to trust in the Lord. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child your baby boy will come a storm with his head. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God.
got your baby boy, it's Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? The sleeping child you Right. In continuation and conclusion of our Sabbath school this morning, as we all remember, what the theme was, holding on to my legacy in Jesus. Now, many persons have a story behind the scars that they carry. Some persons are indeed embarrassed by their scars. Some of us even hide them. Jesus' scars will be his identifying symbol in the earth made new. As such, our scars can be used to identify us, but most importantly, not to condemn us. We need to remember to use the story of our scars to help someone who is going through the same battles that we have overcome. So all that we went through in 2021, we need to use as a catalyst to be able to help us to um, be better persons in 2022. We also should try to help others. We also should, as the, as the team says, to be able to hold on to our legacy in Jesus. Part of that legacy is what did, what did Jesus do? Jesus went and he spread the gospel. So part of this legacy is spreading the gospel. So for 2022, even in the midst of the COVID, we are expected, to, as Jesus did, as his legacy was, to be able to spread the gospel to our friends, our families, our colleagues in the workplaces. It is very important, notwithstanding the scars that we still have, that we are carrying with us on a daily basis. And what we need to remember, when the enemy tries to paint your life in the blackest black he can find in the market, we need to remember that Jesus raises his nail-scarred hands and silences them. Because those scars speak better and louder than our accusers. Those scars say, paid in full. So we need to remember what Jesus' scars says. It says, paid in full. We need to not let the enemy define us by our scars. When Jesus wants to define us by his, his death on the cross, the gift of eternal life, salvation, this is what Jesus wants us to be defined by, his scars. And we need to remember, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And as Isaiah 53 and verse 5 says, by his wounds, we are healed. I would now hand you over to Sister Richards for our next segment that will be coming up in a bit. But before 
that goes on stream, I would like to thank all the persons in the chat who have come out early to be able to share the link, to be able to subscribe, to be able to do other stuff that would be able to make us, to be able to share the gospel to others that we come in contact with on a daily basis. So I want you to be able to use the chat right now and be able to finish the statement that I'm going to make. God is good. What is the ending? If I, when I say God is good, all the time, and all the time, very good. I see Pastor Nodden has said, he say yes, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. So, I would now hand over to Sister Richards, who would now take us to our next segment. Thank you very much. A wonderful New Year Sabbath to all. We are alive. It means that we have a chance to do better, be better, and do more. In the midst of our joy, there is also sadness. And we've had our fair share of sadness here at Arima. The Arima congregation takes this opportunity to send out condolences to our brothers and sisters. Many people have lost someone. Some have lost a father, a grandfather, a husband, a cousin, a nephew, a niece. Please know that you are in our prayers and we continue to offer comfort to you and your family. To Brother Lewis, Sister Alva, Brother Spang, Sister Bonyan, Brother Brother Silan, Sister Rosabel, Sister Charlene, and the Sin Bernards, who've all lost a loved one, know that our prayers are with you. Of course, we have some joy as well. And so we celebrated some anniversaries on the 26th and the 27th of December 2021. The two S's, Steve and Stephanie Quintero, December 26, 2021. The Springer brothers are in full flight. Mr. and Mrs. David Springer, the 26th of December. And of course, Mr. and Mrs. Damian Springer on the 27th of December. We wish them more love, more togetherness and happiness as they journey through their marriage life. Footprints of hope. While we may have lost some, the work must continue for us to gather more into the fold. Join us on January 15th to February 19th, 2022, where Pastor Glenn Samuels will be helping us to understand how we can discover our purpose through the Footprints of Hope crusade that will be coming up soon. Please stay tuned for additional details. Of course, we know the times that we are living in and what can we render? What can we render to Jehovah? for all he has done for us. The most we can do is to follow the guidelines. Follow the guidelines of returning a faithful tithe and offering. We know things have been different and so we have provided various opportunities in which you can return your tithe and offering. We ask that you get in contact with our dear sister Diaz as well as the eldership to return your tithe and offering. Please note that be specific on your tithe and offering list where you specifically will detail exactly what you would like, where you would like the offering to go. So remember, there is nothing that we can really do to compensate for what God has done to us, for the goodness of God. So remember, return your tithe and offering in the various ways in which we have provided to do so. And as we continue on this journey of 2022, we have 364 and a half days, yes? 
half of the first year is already gone, for us to do better, be better, and do more. May God bless you. So at this time, we will have our second praise and worship segment, and we are inviting all the children to come close to your screen to sing with us. We would start with the time to be happy. Bye. 
Father's house there is joy, joy, joy. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved on earth shall gather, who can roll me on the shore? And the roll is called up yonder. morning brethren at this time I want to encourage us to reverently kneel if possible or if you can bow your heads as we approach the throne of our Heavenly Father dear God we come before you today indeed as the song says your goodness and your mercy never fails Lord as we have stepped into this new year 2022 we recognize that we have come through 2021 against the odds but only by your grace and your mercy many of us were afflicted on that journey through 2021 many of us were battered by the various storms of life but in spite of all 
we can declare of your goodness and your mercy and we can say thank you Jesus for sustaining us and thank you Jesus for keeping us on the course in spite of experiencing the loss of our job in spite of experiencing the loss of a loved one be it a friend or family member we thank you for your deliverance and for your word which never fails and indeed our hearts are encouraged and buoyed up by this and lord in this new year we ask so father that we would purpose in our hearts to make things all right with you wash us in the precious blood of the lamb jesus christ and father may we be transformed and may we acknowledge you and praise you for who you are and help us to know that in spite of what lies ahead you o lord have already prepared a way and you would take us through and your angels will be there to bear us with heavenly wings father for this new year i pray that you would give us a spirit of wisdom i pray that you'd give us a spirit of discernment so that we can meet and treat with all of life situations that may present themselves and more importantly there father help us to model ourselves after you the man who knew no sin yet came into this world and took on sin for our benefit so that we can have that precious gift of eternal life and you left examples for us dear lord you gave us salvation you also taught us what it meant to be kind what it meant to be true and what it means to be perfect so lord help us to be disciples for you in word thought deed and action in a special way we ask for your blessing upon your people everywhere especially those whose hearts are grieving and whose hearts are sore father you are balm in gilead you can soothe and heal every fear every despair and every grief father may those persons feel your presence very close even now and help us oh lord as brethren to rally around our brethren to support them in their time of loss lord we look forward to this program we look forward to your word that you have sent for us today through your man servant pastor thomas you've used him many times mightily in the past and we know indeed that you've given to him a special word for us for this first sabbath of this new year hide him behind the cross and may he deliver that message without fear or favor presenting it there lord and rightly dividing the word of truth continue to be with us and may your spirit abound in jesus name amen For your mercy. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together, for he is good. Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. I also want to say Happy New Year to each and every one of you. To our virtual viewers, we say that here is the place that you need to be. To our life congregation, we want to say that here is the place that you need to be. God has been good. So good. Thank you so much, Sister Risha Sentil, for reminding us about this aspect that God has been so good. It's a new year with a new experience. And as such, we are having a new experience in, on January the 15th, straight on to February the 19th with Pastor Glenn Samuels, an evangelistic campaign in which we are going to show you a little highlight as to what this is all about. What if, what there, if is there is a way, a way to, to discover, discover your purpose in life? What if there is a way to find inner peace in the midst of life's crisis? And what if there is a way to overcome despair and hopelessness? Well, let me tell you, there is a way. This January, Hope Beyond is making hope alive again. Join us for the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus online series. God can have things you put you down and bless you even in the presence of your enemies. We will be addressing these common questions and much more. Visit us today at hopebeyond.net for more information. A new dawn of hope is on the horizon. Out for that new hope that is about to dawn. God is good. Do I hear people in the house saying God is good? Uh, am I hearing somebody saying amen on the virtual platform? Indeed, God has been good. And certainly we are always delighted to hear another portion of God's word for his people. And I invite you to share the link today. For today, I am going to speak from my heart again. Uh, yesterday evening, which was 2021, uh, last year, I preached the last sermon um, that I preached from the heart. And today, I am going to preach from the heart again. Oh yes, I'm going to preach from the heart. And the sermon is entitled, I'm holding on to my legacy in Jesus, knowing the time. I'm holding on to my legacy in Jesus, knowing the time. Turn your Bibles or your devices with me to the book of Romans chapter 13. From verses 1 to 7. And then from verses 11 straight on to verses 14. It says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good. And you will have praise from the same. For he is God, minister to you. Minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore... You must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For they are God's ministers attending continually 
to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor whom honor. We go to verses 11, and it says here, And to this, knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its laws. I invite you this time to bow your heads with me as we talk to God. Eternal Father, we are in the new year with a new experience. And Father, we have stopped by again to hear a portion of your word. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Let Christ be uplifted in this place. Have your way, Lord, as the word speaks to my heart. And conviction flows from my lips to those who need to hear that word. Be with your waiting church and your congregation is our prayer in Jesus' name. The question is asked, what is the time? When we look around us, we see a world in revolt, enveloped in violence, destruction and protest. The old norms of conduct are no longer respected. The old cliches no longer work. The old formulas no longer produce the results they used to. In this technological, computerized age, the world has become one global village. Knowledge has increased with incredible speed. Am I talking to somebody today? All the scientific wonders of the, of, uh, uh, of the world past has now uh, collided forming a peak on which to stand ready to hurl this generation into the full and final glory of human scientific outreach once it was the moon we aimed for it was the planets next time the stars and after that who knows it is time when humans will keep on pressing their claims for the conquest of outer space. The age of scientific exploration is indeed the great second renaissance. The glory of which is destiny to reach its peak in our generation. We see new religion are forming throughout the land. A religion created by science. The computer, satellite communication, and the communication highways are causing millions of their devotees to bow their knees in adoration. This new religion makes us into our own God. Worshipping at the shrine that we have dedicated to ourselves. As one scientist has said, science has opened the gateway to heaven. Have mercy, Lord. In the area of morality, we have reached a new law. Collapsing moral standards are stewed in great profusions along the pathway of our descendant society. The mornings have been removed and we are being buffeted back and forth by the winds of loose passion, sexual promiscuity, marital infidelity, and so-called new morals. 
This ever-rising flood if of immorality threatens to engulf all of society. The few minority voices raise in, uh, in alarms at the approaching disaster that song strangely of keyed and unreal. In fact, very few are even listening or concerned. We cannot begin to fathom the great depths of moral decay into which our society has sunken into. We ever have the sad spectacle of clergy, religious leaders putting their approval on homosexuality and premarital sexual relationships. Such is a situation that even the clergy is brainwashed and sin is being called righteousness. Our cities are sick. Our society is sick. Our generation is sick. A terrible plague has broken out in ethnic proportions and moral cesspool threatens the engu to engulf us all. And what is the pity like in the field of religion i wish things were brighter here i wish i could tell us this morning that there is evidence of great revival unfortunately the opposite is true religion is general in general has become formal dead and arctic like here and there can be found a little stirring and flurring but the cruel fact is that the church in general is not being taken serious by the world at large. To most people, God is dead. To most religious people can contend to have their ministers drug them to sleep on Sunday mornings and Sabbath mornings with some type of portion of attraction of secularism and materialism and, 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 and allow them as it were to be able to, to, to accept and swallow this type of, uh, of, of food and thinking to themselves that they're becoming righteous when in fact they are becoming more unrighteous. Am I talking to God's people? Religion for most people is something that they put on and take off like a coat. To be worn only in church or when church time starts. It must not affect their private lives. They want just enough religion to cover them with veneer of respectability. It is time for us as seven-day Adventists to go out into the sick and dying world and declare the blinding claims of God's holy law as exemplified in the life of Christ. Somebody need to say amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13 verse 11 to 14, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in, cl in clamoring and, and worthlessness, not in strife and envy, but Put he on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We are living in a sin sick world. A world where everything is about yourself. As a matter of fact, I'm looking even around and you see the havoc in which COVID is reaping havoc throughout the world. And you are realizing that this particular virus is also a selfish virus because we cannot interact with each other. People don't trust each other. Before the COVID, people did not trust. But now in COVID, people don't even trust their shadow. Am I talking the truth? God's remedy for sin is found in Jesus Christ. In this battered, bleeding, sin sickened, dying world of ours, we confidently point men and women to the soon return of Jesus Christ. And I'm here to let you know, in the midst of COVID, we can still point men and women to the return of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only answer. 
Jesus is the only legacy that we can hold on to in these turbulent times. Jesus is the only answer that is able to put us in a space in which there is confidence, there is hope, there is reassurance of a better tomorrow. Time is running out. Time is running out on all of us. It could very well be that we are nearer to the coming of Christ than we ever, ever even thought. Ours is a wonderful opportunity as believing children of God to witness with our own eyes the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. This is the period that is destined to witness the climax of the ages. Today, the human race finds itself sitting on top of a rumbling volcano and crying out desperately, what shall we do? Our brothers and sisters, this is our opportunity to tell them all things are now ready for the return of heaven's king and that the kingdom of this world are soon to become the kingdom of our Lord and of Jesus Christ. Many of us, we are in our, our workspace. We are among family members who haven't given their life to Jesus Christ. People are perplexed on every side. As a matter of fact, some people believe that this is the end of the world. Some people believe that there, there's no more hope. Some people believe that I shall live and because I shall die, therefore it doesn't make any sense. I will die anyhow. I'm here to let you know that this is the opportunity in which you need to tell people that Jesus is coming again. Give them the hope of the legacy in Jesus to hold on unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of their faith. Am I speaking to somebody? Oh, James Stewart of Edinburgh, Scotland once said, Our task is to confront the rampant disillusionment of today and smash it with the cross of Christ. And shame it with the splendor of the resurrection. Oh, I would like to add. Shut it with the glorious news of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Whatever department of the church we serve. And I'm talking to my believing children of God. Seventh-day Adventist believers who are listening to me. Uh, this time has come for us to be able not to give up, but to hold on and do what God has asked us to do in the vineyard of the church by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Permit me to say a word to a vast number of highly educated, beautiful young people of this church. You have great talent that God can use in proclamation of his message and the finishing of this work on earth. You should bring to the cause of God an alert mind, a dedicated life, and a surplus of good common sense. What a great blessing it is for any church to have our young people to be well trained academically and then have them training baptized by the Holy Spirit. I say to you today, young people, get all the education you can and then use it for the glory of God. For Ellen White, in Advent Review and Sabbath Herald of November 13, 1913, she says, All heaven is a stir." Engaging in preparing for the day of God's vengeance. The day of science deliverance. The time of tarrying is almost ended. The pilgrims and strangers who have so long been seeking a better country are almost home. I feel as if, and this is Sister White speaking, one of my favorite authors. Hear what she says. I feel as if I must cry aloud. Homeland bound. Rapidly we are nearing the time when Christ will come together to redeem us to himself.
brothers and sisters, virtual viewers, those who are listening to me, listen very carefully to the preacher. The times demand, these times that we live in, demands of us to be able to do introspection, agonizing, and do a reappraisal of our objectives and our methods as to how we do things. We must keep pace with the demands of the tremendous hour. This is no time for timid leadership. Have mercy. This is no time for us to be able to play on the river, on the bank. This is time for God's people to become creative in ministry. This is the time where God's people need to bind together, pull together, and allow the gospel of Jesus Christ to be given a certain sound, a certain trumpet blast, so that men and women can know that Jesus is coming again. Oh, we are nearing home. I believe that the, the revival we so much are in need of is soon to happen. There will be a revival among us not seen since the days of Pentecost. It will come with ten times the power of Pentecost. Under the Holy Spirit outpouring and unction, this Advent movement will not peter out on the rocks of oblivion, but rather it shall gather momentum every passing day until we reach a grand and glorious climax. Some years ago, John Evelyn visited Amsterdam. And went into the tower of St. Nicholas to observe, to observe the playing of those marvelous chimes. He found a man way below the bells with a type of wooden gloves on his hand, pounding away on the keyboards. The nearness of the bells, the clanging of the keys, when struck by the wooden gloves and the clatter of the wires made it impossible for him to hear the music. But many people in the town paused in their work of mercy and listened to the chimings and were so glad with the sweet melodious music that came from it. Fellow believers, fellow laborers, Fellow online viewers, you may be in your watchtowers and you, are, you probably are becoming wary. But you need to remember, pouring the music of your lives out into the empty lives of others. The rattling of the keys, the heavy, heavy hammers, the, 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 the swinging of the wires and the very nearness of your work may all conspire to prevent you from catching the music. But across the crowded cities and villages, full of weary, sin-sick souls, and far out the eternal sea, the melody of your work will blend with the songs of the angels. Do not ever be discouraged in your work for the master. Those of you who have stood in the heights above the city of Naples in Italy, tells us as the song comes up from the city, reaches up into the air, it meets and mingles on a minor key. There are the voices of traffic and of command, the voices of a, a affection and rebuke, the shouts of sailors and cries of itinerant vendors, in the street, as well as the chatter and laughter of children. But they all come up, forming an indistinguishable mourn in the air. Today, the world is mourning. Today, the world is mourning. And as such, many are wondering what next. Many are wondering what can be done. The world is mourning due to COVID. 
The world is mourning because of the vast amount of deaths. The world is mourning because of the infection rate. But in spite of our mourning, we know and we believe that there is a God who can deliver his children. We believe that there is a God who one day will come in glory and put an end to COVID and death forevermore. Today I implore you to hold on to the legacy of Jesus Christ. Hold on with the understanding that God is with us. Hold on with the understanding that no matter what we face, he is there because he has given us the legacy of the Bible, which is inscribed in it about the life of Jesus Christ. And through it all, we can make it. Oh, now is the time. And thank God we are the people. I am sure that we all recognize that we have come to, the, to, to this particular time in history and in Bible prophecy in which we are wondering what next. But prophecy believing children of God are not worried because they understand that these times must come to pass. I might speak to the God's people. If ever there was a time that we needed to believe in the Lord. We sure do need him right now. God is saying to us. The harvest is ripe. But the reapers are few. Hearts of humanity are failing them for fear. When men and women have become disillusioned. With the fleeting pleasures of this earth. Now when the universal cry is for some lasting and eternal. Now while the focus of good and evil are consolidating for the last great struggle to death. Now while science is exploring in ever breathtaking marvels. Now when men are reaching for the planets of outer space and on the stars. Now while the doors of opportunity are still open for preaching of the gospel. Now while stupefying, crippling, corrosive environments, epic of sin seems to be bombarding us on every side in our society. Now while the youth of the world are looking for a challenge, something to live for, something to die for. Now while the confusion, bewilderness, mass of earth are grouping society seem bent on destruction. Now while moral laxity and marital infidelity and the new moral morality are doing the destructive work. Now while global hurricanes. Now when prophecy of jo Joel concerning the outpouring of God's spirit upon his people in the latter rain proportion is about to fulfill. Now in this hour of history, God's call to service comes to each of us to do our part to bring to a great triumphal con um, conclusion the sharing of the advent message throughout this great, challenging, desperate pre period of world's history. We are a people of prophecy. You may ask the question, Pastor, what then is the legacy we must hold on to? The legacy we must hold on to is this. We are a people of prophecy. A people of destiny. A people with a mission. A people with a deadline. We are the people with the message for these times. We are the people of the remnant. And a redemption draw it nigh. The time is ripe. The message is right. And God is ready. The question is, are you ready? Someone has said, the church whispers must become shouts now. Her litany must become enthusiastic. And her subdued light must become a beacon upon the hilltops of the world. We are the people of the Bible. We are the people of a Savior who died to save men and women from sin. We are the people of hope 
We look for Christ soon return. We are the people of prayer. We talk with God. We are the people of law and order. We love God's commandments. We are people with the Sabbath. We keep holy the seventh day of the week. We are the people of principle. We hold high standards. We are the people with a program. The globe is our limit. We are the people with a heart. We, we help the needy. We are the people with a past. We go back to Pentecost. We are the people with a future. Heaven is our home. Today, heaven is our home. For the legacy that we have to hold on to is the legacy of Jesus' soon return. Friends of mine, to those who are watching online, you may probably, you may probably have just stumbled on to this link. You may, you may perhaps have been given an invitation from someone. But I want you to be able to understand what I'm saying to you. Scientists don't have the answer. Doctors don't have the remedy. As a matter of fact, COVID has taught us that it's Jesus and Jesus alone. Each of, each of us, every day, we wake up to death. We walk in death. We eat in death. We talk in death. We move and death, but thanks be to God that if I should die on this side of life, on this side of the journey, I can be reconciled with my Lord when he comes in glory. Praise be to God. We as a people must be steadfast. We must hold on. We must know that Jesus is coming soon. Hold on to our legacy in Jesus. Don't hold on to things of this world thinking that it will get better. As I said to the church last evening, I wish I could promise you something different. But the prophecy that I want to declare upon our lives today, that there will be storms that will come. But know that even though storms may come, Jesus is in the vessel and he can help you go through the storms of life. Last year was a rough year. Told the church last night, I said, listen. Every time I hear my phone ring, I, I, I'm bracing myself for bad news. I'm saying to us here today, whether you have heard it 20 years ago, whether you grew up in the church and your great-great-grandfather, your fourth generation or third generation, Seventh-day Adventist or a believer. I want you to know that this world doesn't have long again. What you are seeing is in preparation for Jesus' soon return. Don't touch that dial. Don't come off that YouTube now. Jesus is talking to you because I have a word for you to let you know that Jesus has said, put your house in order. I'm about to return. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, forgive your husbands. Children, forgive your parents. Parents, forgive your children. It is time for us to reconcile under the banner of Prince Emmanuel with love and forgiveness and going forward in 2022 knowing that no matter what storms may come, it is well with our souls. Keep your hand to the plow and hold on. God is talking to his church. The sentiments of my heart it's aching for the pain I'm seeing people are going through. People are crying and they are agonizing. What next? How much more, Lord? Met a young lady this week and she had nowhere to live and she's looking from pillar to post and she's trying her best. But, but what I want to let you know today that God sees your struggles. 
The only thing we can do is put your hand in Jesus' hand. And he will help you navigate the storms in your life. You may have lost your job. You, you, you may have been abandoned by someone that you love. Betrayed in somewhere or the other. I'm here to let you know that there's a legacy in Jesus that you can hold on to. Make Jesus your personal friend and savior. Take him. Hold him. Place him where he needs to be placed. Accommodate to allow him to take full control of your life. And you will have a brand new experience in Jesus. If you want to start fresh for 2022, here's the remedy. Give your life to Jesus Christ. For in giving your life to Jesus Christ, everything else falls in place. God sees his church. He sees his people. And I want you to remember that no matter what we're going through, keep your hand on that plow. Hold on. I want to invite Brother Sintelet to sing that song. Keep your hand on the plow and hold on. We need to hold on in these times. We need to hold on. You will join us just now as we hear that song, Hold On. Keep your hand on the plow. Hold on. God bless you, brother. Sing for us. And time be no more The 
these truths are secure. God's word shall endure. Whatever may change, these things are sure. We believe. So if the mountains are cast down into the plains, when kingdoms all crumble, this one remains. Our faith is not subject to seasons of men. With our fathers we proclaim. We believe our Lord will come as he said. Amen. Indeed, we have been blessed today, and we thank God for using his manservant, Pastor Thomas, to deliver that message, keeping your hand on the plow and the legacy of Jesus Christ. Let us bow our heads as we close our worship session for today. Heavenly Father, we praise and we magnify your most holy name. We thank you, O Lord, for the message that you sent to us. Indeed, we believe there, Lord. Indeed, your word is true and your word is sure. In spite of all the changes that are around us, there's one constant, which is you and your word. And we thank you for your more sure word of prophecy there, Father. We thank you for your legacy that you have left behind. We thank you for your sacrificial death on the cross so that we have that hope that we can be reunited with you when you come again. Help us to hold fast and help us, dear Lord, to hold on to you because once we keep our eyes fixed upon you and we hold on to the plow, we would not be shaken. So bless us all as we are about to disperse. We ask that you'd continue to watch over us, you'd continue to guide us, you'd continue to protect us, you'd continue to shield us, you'll continue to heal us. And may your blessings be upon us and others. In Jesus' name, amen.